Well, I checked, and 0% of you want me to review Kirk Cameron Saving Christmas. So let's settle in with some good old-fashioned Santa and the Ice Cream Bunny. So happy, and you will help, won't you? Of course you will. Wait. Wait, I take it back. Don't make me do this. There were some movies. Terrible movies. Movies so awful, no one would touch. Then came a Matthew, sad little Matthew. Matthew decided these movies to watch. For every good movie, there's at least ten bad. Matthew didn't drag himself through the crap to find the worst ones there are to be had. Today's episode, Santa and the Ice Cream Bunny. <sighs> Happy Yule, motherfuckers. Today we're looking at one of my all-time favorite So Bad It's Good movies. Santa and the Ice Cream Bunny is a film from 1972. According to this poster, it only ran matinee screenings, but I'm honestly kind of surprised it got any theatrical release at all. In fact, I'm kind of surprised a poster survived for it, and you know, while we're at it, I'm surprised there's even still a print of this movie. It took us forever to find all of Metropolis, and in fact, it was lost for a long, long time. This shit, however, this we still have prints of. What apparently didn't survive was the writer of the film, as the only writer credited on IMDb is Hans Christian Andersen for writing Thumbelina. But we'll get to that when we get to that. And look, Santa's the only credited actor, and most of the IMDb listings are for Thumbelina. Which is fair, because most of the movie is Thumbelina. Anyway, the film was directed by R. Weiner, who presumably wrote the movie too, as the credits just say, an R. Weiner film. Also, this is his only credit at all, which might mean it's a pseudonym, but he easily could have made this and nothing else. If it is a pseudonym, I'm gonna attach it to producer Barry Mahon, who directed the Thumbelina and Jack and the Beanstalk films that came attached to this. Mahon also directed a lot of exploitation films, so I guess it would make sense for him to want to cover up his name for a Christmas film. But he seemed fine with slapping it on Thumbelina and Jack and the Beanstalk, so maybe Weiner does exist. However, what I know is a fake name is the kids in the film. No specific kids, just kids get credited. This was mostly filmed in and around an amusement park, so they might have just used any random kids who walked up. No word on who was in the ice cream bunny suit. And oh yeah, there's someone in a furry suit in this movie. No wonder my audience wanted to see a review of this. And remember, you asked for this. Kids, please learn to sing together. Like, church Christmas pageants get that right. That is the minimum level of effort. Not that these lyrics are really worth hearing. Also, all these toys look built already. You're just trying to look busy in case the big man comes by. But they get concerned when Santa's reindeer show up without Santa. Do you have to sing what she literally just said? And then we meet the fakest looking Santa ever. You think it looks bad now, but when he takes his jacket off, he just looks like the hobo who lives in your neighbor's bushes. So he put on his thinking cap. I wonder what he came up with. Oh, woe is me. Oh, woe is me. Who will set old Santa free? Sit there and sing. That's what he came up with. My reindeer left me sitting here. It was just too hot for them, I fear. Gee, Santa, maybe if you weren't sloshed, you could sing on beat. Then Santa the Time Lord freezes time all around, which I guess is lucky for this dipshit that's about to die. Then he falls asleep, but I guess he has to to call all these kids telepathically? Bobby! 
The mythology of this film is all over the place. Girls! Oh, everyone else gets names, but we're just girls. Nah, it's fine. Thanks a lot, Santa. Kid! Oh, but this one's just kid. Come on, man. Then Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn show up. My favorite Christmas characters. Then we get a beautiful Christmas song played on kazoo. So the plot of this movie revolves around Santa getting his magic sleigh stuck in some sand, and he can't get back to the North Pole, so he asks these kids for help. Not like a tow truck driver, or even like someone with a shovel. Hey, Santa, why don't you take one of those planes that's circling around up there? That might be a good idea, except what would I do with my sleigh? I don't know, magically teleport it? Oh, I get it now. This is trying to remind me of Christmas at my grandparents, when Grandpa would sit around endlessly watching Hee Haw reruns. Hi, Tom. What do you call drinking from a mason jar? I don't know, Hook. What do you call drinking from a mason jar? Fancy Johnny. <laughs> so the kids run off to get help, and Santa. Christmas Wonder. Christmas Wonder. So the kid's first idea is to get a gorilla to pull him out of the sand. Where did you even find a gorilla? They also get a donkey, a pig, a sheep, a cow, a horse, and a dog. That's a lot more reasonable. Although I'm worried these kids just raided a petting zoo. Wait, is Santa wearing shades? Oh, I guess not. Oh, never mind, he is again. Yeah, back that ass up. Actually, most of these animals don't work because Santa can't get them tied to the sled and just gives up. Look, he's not even in that much sand. He seems to be making good time on his own. He also won't shut the fuck up for two seconds. Oh, I've got to get out of here. Got to get this sand out as much as I can. Oh, what? Was that working too well? Come on, Santa, you don't even want to deliver these toys, do you? And then Santa tells them the story of another fucking movie. Seriously, more than half this movie is a totally different movie. The more common movie is a version of Thumbelina, but there's also a cut where he tells the story of Jack and the Beanstalk. And here's some speculation on that. I think the Jack and the Beanstalk version was the theatrical release, and Thumbelina was the version on the VHS release that this movie did in fact have. I say this because the Jack and the Beanstalk version has a 16x9 aspect ratio, while the Thumbelina version is 3x4. To back this up, both versions appear to have been discovered by Rift Tracks, who originally riffed the Thumbelina version, but switched to Jack and the Beanstalk for their live riff. My guess is they stumbled upon the VHS and said, we have to riff this because, Christ, look at it. And while searching for a nicer print for their live riff, they found a theatrical version with Jack and the Beanstalk. But that's all speculation. Interestingly, IMDb makes no mention of the Jack and the Beanstalk version, in spite of linking directly to Amazon Prime where they have the Jack and the Beanstalk version. Well, kids, it looks like I'm stuck in the sand. Santa, it looks like you're, like, stuck in two inches of sand. No, no, no. Sorry, no presents for the boys and girls this year. I mean, I'm sure if you, like, got up and, uh... No, got... woe is me, oh. Woe is me. Uh, that, that... Hey, <laughs> did I ever tell you kids the story of the time Matt reviewed Thumbelina? There were some movies, terrible movies, movies so awful, no one would touch. Then came a Matthew, sad little Matthew, Matthew decided these movies to watch. For every good movie, there's at least ten bad, Matthew and the Dragon 
yourself through the crap to find the worst ones around to be had. Today's episode, Thumbelina. <sighs> they, uh, they only had this flavor in two liters. Hello, Internet. I'm called Matt. And welcome to this totally random episode that doesn't tie into anything else. Today, I'm reviewing Thumbelina. For reasons. Thumbelina is a 1970s retelling of the Hans Christian Andersen classic. It comes to us from Barry Mahon, who's known for some really crappy kids movies and some... adult films. Wink wink. He's also a producer on Santa and the Ice Cream Bunny, whatever the hell that is. The cast hasn't done much, with the most prolific being Mr. Mole, who's known for his work as... FBI Man, Man in Bargain Store, and man. Seems like a pretty manly actor to me. My favorite, however, is the witch, Heather Grinter, who was in this and a movie called Blood Freaks. So that's how you know it's good. The film starts in what the hell? An amusement park? Yeah, this whole thing seems to be an advertisement for an amusement park. The only thing that would be worse is if there was a film that was just a lame framing device for this commercial. Wait, she's not even Thumbelina? So somewhere Santa's telling the story of a girl who goes to see a Thumbelina movie. I mean, I'm using a framing device. What's Santa and the Ice Cream Bunny? I'm bathing the morning dew. Did she say shower in the mountain dew? I... I feel <laughs> sticky. The song, Honest to God, goes on for two full minutes of footage of Pirate World, formerly in Dania, Florida. The park is now closed down, but it was used as a location for a handful of movies. So Thumbelina's mother was a woman who lived alone and couldn't have kids, so she goes to a witch to get a daughter. Dude, haven't you ever seen things never get pregnant via witchcraft? At least I think that's what that movie was about. Last year I turned an ugly toad. Next. I didn't want to be a spinster by my own choosing. No one would have me. You keep telling yourself that. Oh, no one wants to date me because I'm a spinster. It's not just because you have a shitty personality, Karen. So the spinster pays the witch for a child, and she gives her a magic seed and tells her to plant and water it. So that's how babies are made. Oops, I mean, that's how women in their late 20s are made. Uh, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go pay a witch 12 cents for some seeds. Uh, n no reason. But it seems her new daughter is only an inch tall. Ah! What is this 1984 shit? Throw a hammer at it! Oh, I love my little Ah uh, yes, the leopard print frog, my favorite species. All this time I've been doing nothing but sitting by the pad. Eh, you and me both, pal. I've brought you a wife, my son. Isn't she beautiful? Rivet, rivet, rivet. Don't make so much noise or she will wake up. Yeah, that's what you want to hear the night before your wedding. Fish felt sorry for her and chewed the roots of the lily pad loose so that it would float downstream. Oh fuck, did I miss the Take LSD Now sign? Oh, it's a kid's movie from the 1970s. I should have been on it already. I'm a little girl. My name is Thumbelina. That cannot be true. Human beings are large creatures. You are smaller than we are. You must be some kind of a bug. I will ask the advice of my friends. She says she is a human being, but I think she is lying. We bugs know nothing of using contractions. It is the bug way. Why don't we mash her, or squeeze her, or pinch her, or do something? 
Yeah! Torture! 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 You know, sometimes I feel like I didn't need to add a serial killer character to this show. Apparently Thumbelina is trapped in the woods and has no way to get home. I've never read Thumbelina, so I have no clue if this is accurate or not. Soon winter falls and she comes to try to live with a mole. Yeah, it looks like a mole to me. I certainly understand. Frogs are terrible looking. We moles think they are filthy creatures. Such frog racism. One day, another mole comes by named Mr. Digger. Fine. He lives near here, but he goes south for the winter. Um, just as moles do. My, my. What a beautiful child. You were right. She is exquisite. Oh, great. It's not bad enough the furries have taken over my comment section. Now they have to appear in the movies I watch. This is what I get for summoning the spirit of Cool Cat. Actually, I guess an anthropomorphic mole wanting to fuck a human girl would be... a reverse furry? Why don't you come with me, and I will show you some very interesting things. Like my penis. So Mr. Digger takes her through a series of underground tunnels, and they find a dead bird. And then they just... leave it. And now that I am older, I have only one sorrow. A sorrow? How can someone as wise and as wealthy as you have a sorrow? Because true happiness can't be achieved through knowledge or possessions. Only through getting your dick wet. Nah, I I'm serious. He just wants to marry Tom Thumb. When someone offers to be your friend, you know they truly mean it. Oh, you shouldn't be so serious. Yeah, Mr. Mole. Why so serious? I'm the one who's lonesome. A pretty thing like you lonesome? How could that be? I don't know. Maybe because people only like her for her looks, you shallow asshole. It's such a funny world. Here I am with everything, and I'm unhappy. And there you are, a beautiful child with everything to look forward to, and you're unhappy. And then everyone was just unhappy forever, and then they died. He brought her here to propose. That's it. The movie keeps avoiding it, but that's what's going on. I hesitate in asking you, but under the circumstances, I think it would be appropriate. Thumbelina, will you marry me? Yeah, ten minutes after you meet is an appropriate time. I want to protect you. I want to see that you are safe from all the things that could happen to you. Oh, she needs a fucking man to do that. Don't listen to him, Thumper. You're an independent woman. Please, Thumbelina. I know I'm not handsome or young. Or the same species as you. I wanted to make a joke about moles having weird penises, but when I looked it up, all I could find was people with moles on their penis. So, uh, maybe moles have weird penises. Maybe not. <laughs> what? I don't know if that's just the cut I'm watching or if that was in the theatrical release. The cigarette burn comes in here, so this is the end of the reel? I guess someone just switched reels too early. He is an older man, but he is very rich. So just kill him in his sleep and take the money. God, this movie is just so weird aesthetically, and now I'm dealing with the story of a rich old mole marrying a little girl. Oh, and the dead bird was actually alive, and Gumby's been nursing it back to health. Miss Mole says being friends with the bird isn't practical, and marrying the rich mole is practical. So this is basically the tale of doing what's practical versus what makes you happy, which I guess I can get behind. Doesn't make the story of a young girl marrying a mole she met the same day he proposed to her any less weird. Nurse him back to health, and then he leaves, without even saying goodbye. I told you these birds are silly. Thankless things. More fucking racism from Grandma and Mole. Oh god, oh jeez, stop, don't, no.
You know, this bird reiterates a lot of points I made, except the actor is high as balls and can't speak English very well. But a mole is not even the same thing. And you will tell Mr. Mole that I didn't mean to hurt his feelings or anything, or insult him. It was just that, well, I thought I could find a better husband elsewhere. Yeah, most guys would take the news that their fiancé wanted to find better men pretty well. What? They're in front of a white wall, not even blue like the sky. And the bird's casting a shadow on it. Then Thumbprint recaps the story we just saw to the viewer in the amusement park, who was also part of a story Santa was telling in an alternate dimension. And then she goes to the land of the flower children. In case you forgot, this was the 70s. They're people who are also small and were born from flowers. And we end on more footage of Pirate World. And that's Thumbelina. Why did I review this? This movie is probably worth a laugh or two just because of how poorly made it is. But man, it is just really fucking weird. So much so that it becomes hard to follow at parts. Again, I've never read Thumbelina, so maybe part of it is on the source material, but that can't fix the production value of a community theater and acting that's even worse than that. Still, with a few friends or a few drugs, this could be a pretty good time. So that's my thoughts on the 1970s Thumbelina. That's the end of the episode. That's all I've got. Goodbye! Wow, what a great story! Yes, and now I'm going to teleport back to the North Pole. Wow! I feel as though that sketch contained spoilers. Yeah, you pet a fucking dog, Santa. Not like you just spent 40 minutes on a totally different story. No reason to jump back into the plot yet. And then some kids hear a fire truck coming and abandon Santa. So now that he's alone, Santa undresses. Look at this, the dude's skinnier than I am. And only an hour into the movie does the titular ice cream bunny appear. How many movies? How many movies am I going to have to watch where the thing in the title doesn't show up until well after it should have shown up? Oh yeah, dogs bark with their mouth open all the time. Boomer, no! And then it takes Five and a half minutes for the ice cream bunny to get to Santa. Ice cream bunny, of course. Of course. Of course, the ice cream bunny. Everyone knows that popular Christmas character. Is he made of ice cream? Or does he hand out ice cream? Because neither seems to be true, so I don't know why he's called that. My prediction. Oh god, don't, don't wink again. My favorite thing is how whoever's in the ice cream bunny suit clearly can't see out of it. So Santa rides home in the frozen yogurt hare's fire truck and magically teleports his sleigh back home. Seems like maybe you could be getting a ride on an airplane or something faster than a fire truck if you could do that the whole time. So that's Santa and the ice cream bunny. The best so bad it's good Christmas movie ever. There's basically 30 minutes of original footage in this movie, but every second is worth it. This film is nonsense to the nth degree. And while the movie within the movie isn't nearly as good on both accounts, it's still hilariously baffling that most of this movie is another movie, one of which is about someone watching a movie. Santa and the Ice Cream Bunny is a must-see for bad movie lovers. It's so insanely bad that I love it. And now that we're at the end of the video, I should, uh, probably apologize for the furry jokes. In real life, I'm pretty down with furries, honestly. You guys know how to party, and most of you know how to take a joke. And I'm not just saying that because you make up half my fan base. 
Honestly, why would I want fans that can't take a joke about themselves? And, hey, speaking of which, look at this. I am dangerously close to 500 subscribers. Which I know is not a lot, but, you know, that would be a great way to end this year. So, uh, go ahead and send this to all your furry friends. Through Google Plus or whatever social media the kids are using nowadays. It doesn't have to be this video either. It could be the Cool Cat video or the Dingo Pictures video. That one's pretty popular. And I guess I want to end with Happy Holidays to all of you, the furries and the skinnies. Rebel, you old hound, you were the one who helped me. Were you the one that brought the ice cream bunny to help me out of my predicament? Other Matt. Other Matt. The Guns N' Roses, what? I, I made a Christmas video without any blasphemy in it. Oh. There you go. Happy Yule, you fucking heathen.